but Zachary is playing that dark toolbox type deck. We were not able to see it set up yesterday to its fullest extent, but we could see it pull a 180 here today. And meanwhile, Shintaro, he is playing Blacephalon GX, Naga Nadell, and it will be kind of a hard matchup for Zachary here. Yeah, he's playing uh, Blacephalon GX, kind of not the one you saw, not the version of the deck you saw uh, earlier today in the hands of Zachary Lesage. He actually is playing the more traditional, I'd say, Nagana Dell version. Is your former world champion? Uh, so, so you think this is a you think this is going to be an uphill battle for Zachary? Well, so anytime uh, if you're playing Blacephalon GX, you're happy when your opponent is using big tag team Pokemon as their main attackers, because that means you only have to knock out two of them and you win the game. That means less energy for you to discard. The worst possible matchup for a deck kind of like this is something like Malamar, right. where they just have one prize attacker after one prize attacker. I don't think you'll really see this here. Uh, his only really one prize option is something like uh, Darkrai Prism. Right, you, that's definitely something we've seen the uh, Blacephalon decks prey on in the past is, you know, I can hit, oh. I can hit these numbers, I can knock out Pokemon that are big. And look, we're seeing a actually very important part of uh, Zachary's deck here in yeah, the if, prize card. If y'all remember, he lost because he prized two of his Sneasel uh, in the first game he was on camera yesterday. And a prizing a 1-1 one, one line here, along with that Dark Eye Prism, that's one of the best acceleration for energy you have. But he will be getting a couple mulligans here and finally figures out what type of deck Shintaro is playing. Which can be a big advantage to sequence your first few turns, knowing what your opponent's uh, playing, and these mulligans are going to definitely help out as well. But he knows that he is facing an uphill battle here. Wouldn't it be a, wouldn't it be incredible if Shintaro was able to make top eight and actually run it back, win worlds again? Oof. Oh man, uh, we haven't really seen a, a repeat champion since uh, good old Jason Klusinski. Yeah, he's uh, Jason Klusinski, the only three-time world champion, the only two-time world champion as well. No one else has actually been able to finish in first place in the Masters Division twice. And uh, Shincharo is going to try to uh, add his name to that list very shortly. It's definitely going to be an interesting matchup to see if both players can get their basics down pretty fast. Uh, this version of Lucephalon relies on the Naganadal GX, and, or not the GX, the regular one for the charging up ability to get your fire energy from your discard into play so you can just remove it with Mind Blown. All right, it looks like Zachary will start things off for us. He has a, just tough to Sneasel, which is a good thing to find. Going to find out soon with this Cherish Ball that one of his Weaviles, well, his whole Sneasel line actually is prized. Yeah, and one of the best things that uh, Zachary actually has going for him against Shintaro is the fact that Mega Sableye Tyranitar GX has that greedy crush attack. Five energy, it's very hefty cost, but if he can get to it, 210 damage, and if he knocked out a GX Pokemon, he takes an extra prize. So that means, for his game plan, if he can take a prize on something like this Mew, then he'll be able to take a knockout on a Blacephalon GX and just skip B-String completely. Well, that's absolutely huge. If you've been following along with our coverage today, you have seen how important B-String is, how powerful that card is in the B-String turns, as we say, uh, for being able to just power up these Blacephalon decks, bring them perhaps back from behind. Uh, and if, and wow, if Zachary can actually just play around that completely and cut that off, that might be actually huge. Yeah, and here we see him have the Ditto, have the Sneasel, as well as the Cynthia. This is a pretty strong start from Zachary here, although these brand new six cards will have to net him something for the next turn. So tell us a little bit about this Dark Box deck exactly. It, you know, it's called Dark Box. It's a toolbox deck. It has a lot of different options available to it. What is the best one versus uh, Shintaro here? What is Zachary going to aim to be attacking with? All right, so uh, your main attacker is that uh, Darkrai and Umbreon GX tag team, dealing 150 for three energy and 60 to one of your uh, opponent's benched GXs. It really does play into the uh, strategy of skipping B-String. A lot of snipe damage, but this Mew is going to stop it. So Mew's going to be one of the targets he's going to try to look to get rid of in the coming turns. And uh, oh, throwing some cards around is Shintaro. <laughs> yeah, fortunate in a way that Shintaro, in a way that Shintaro started with the Mew, so that Zachary can kind of target it down and take care of it right away. Is it is going to be a frustrating uh, choice to deal with? And this is one thing I love when you only play a certain number of Pokemon. 
you want to know exactly what's prize, and he is doing that here. He's like, okay, I know I have this in my deck, this in my prizes. Now I can play forward from here with perfect information. Yeah, exactly. Something you'll see all the top players in the game doing at this level of competition is making sure I know exactly what is prize I need to make. And that can be huge, right? We, we and that takes skill to fan out your deck like that, too. Yeah, he's holding the whole deck in one hand, all of the Pokemon uh, boosted up so you can see exactly what's in his prize cards. We've seen World Championships be won and lost due to forgetting what was in your prize card, so definitely not something you want to repeat here. Yeah, actually playing a Psychic Energy as well as the Beast Energy Prism, so he has a couple different outs to attack with the Nagadadal GX. And here we go. Serious Treasure finds its target. Now he's considering playing another one, just kind of determining what he wants to discard here. He does have that Welder in hand with only one energy. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned earlier, we call the Dark Toolbox deck a Toolbox deck because really, you're going to reach in, pull out a different tool for a different matchup. Like, oh, well, I'm going to need a hammer for this, so that means, all right, I'm going to go with that Dark Eye and Umbreon GX. But if I'm going to need... A uh, lower to the ground attacker. I'll do the Dark Eye Prism and just keep going on from there. And it, it really does have a lot of answers for some of these different matchups out in the metagame. Exactly. You just the, the advantage of the toolbox decks is that flexibility that you have an answer for everything theoretically. But unfortunately, the disadvantage is, again, as we've said time and time again, that the deck can be a little bit clunky. Maybe you don't find the right answers that you need at the right time. So we'll have to see how this game plays out and see if Zachary can overcome that inherent clunkiness and take this match down. All right, off that Cynthia, though, does not seem to get much of what he needs. No sort of ultra space or anything to search for of Lacephalon. Does have that double custom catcher and a mysterious treasure as well, but just dealing with a few of his basics here. He will Psy Power this turn. Unfortunately, he's 10 damage away from knocking out that Ditto Prism on the bench. That would have been huge. But he's going to op bust open the dice here. Move the little... Uh, a little styrofoam. Yep. Thinking about what exactly he's going to do, making a very informed, very careful decision here, Ishantara Ito, your former world champion. So it's hard, because the, the Mega Sableye Tranitar has 280 HP. Uh, it, it means that you just need six energy to take it out with the Cephalon. Uh, but it, it, it's really difficult, just because you still need five, He's not going to attack with that for a while, so you don't want to waste a custom catcher to bring it up when you could just take out like his Weavile GX with a bunch of energies or his uh, Dark Eye and Umbreon with a bunch of energy. And it looks like trying to take out that Weavile in the future is what Shintaro decided to do. Three damage counters onto that Sneasel. We see a Cherish Ball grab the Weavile GX immediately going to evolve and get this party going. Weavile GX, a very important part of the consistency, part of the strategy of this deck. And we've seen games we won and lost by not having a Weavile on the board uh, early in the game. Yeah, it does evolve the Ditto there, though. Gets an energy on the Hoopa GX, and this is what he really needs. Hoopa GX is one of the cards that helps this Dark Toolbox deck set up a lot of its uh, turns. Being able to search for any two cards and put them in your hand really only kind of countered against by Reset Stamp. Yeah, Reset Stamp will come into play here, I'm sure, as it has in every game. But that Hoopa GX is a very powerful card to add to consistency, as long as your opponent doesn't have the Reset Stamp. And there is the switch off those six cards from Zachary here, and he will be able to Rogue Ring and get the rest of the cards he'll need for next turn. Also gets a Poi Pull down, so he will have a target for stuff like B-String and a Naganadel if he draws into it. So that Hoopa GX coming right into action, as you said, one of the most important cards in the deck. It's also interesting here, right, because doing doing this Rogue Ring kind of forces the reset stamp if your opponent has it. And it, I don't want to call it a waste exactly, but it's not when your opponent wants to play the reset stamp. They want to stamp you when you're down to, you know, a prize or two, and they want to just completely lock you out of the game, not when you just happen to have a good hand. Exactly. Uh, and we might see that here, but it depends because Shintaro's still trying to get some semblance of a setup. Remember, this is turn two, but already Zachary looks to be in a good position here. But we say that every time with Vocephalon, and then it comes out of nowhere and just takes knockouts. So you can't count this deck out. 
You see a welder on to the Poipo there drawing three cards, indicative of that Shintaro maybe doesn't have a way to find a Blacephalon. I can't quite make out the cards in his hand. Yeah, I, I think he drew at least two fire. Uh, does have that mysterious treasure. Not able to search for Blacephalon GX with that, though. So, man, this is looking rough. Yeah, usually one of the advantages of playing this uh, Blacephalon deck is that you get a lot of options for finding your basic Pokemon, which is something that not all of the decks in the format currently get. You know, you have, you have Ultra Space, you have Cherish Ball, you have all this stuff that can smooth that out and make sure that you can put a Blacephalon on the board early, but not working out for Shintaro. You see he's deep in the tank, yeah. trying to figure out what to do. Told that uh, he does need to make a play. Unfortunately, the way his hand is, it's a little awkward. I think... That yeah, he was... has a lily. Oh, no, sorry. He, he already used the welder, of course. Yeah, he has... Oh, this, is, this is so awkward for him. He has the double custom catcher. So if he can get his hand down far enough, maybe he can draw a few cards with that. But it looks like he might just Psy Power again this turn for no real benefit here. It doesn't look like he has that too better of an option, really. Yeah, All right. exactly what he's going to do. Putting the damage onto that uh, Weavile. It is smart, though, putting the damage on Weavile because for most Blacephalon players, you're like, oh, well, why? Why would he do that? But since he commits the space to a Psychic Energy, he actually is going for the Naganadel GX Snipe. The 170 damage to take out a Weavile GX later on the bench. Yeah, really really important there. Um, again, that's the kind of thing you'll see at this level of competition is these players are not going to make big mistakes like that, especially a former world champion, uh, you know, one a legendary Japanese player like Shintaro is going to play as tight as he possibly can uh, throughout these rounds, even though it's been a very, very long day and very stressful day of competition for all of these competitors. And there's a third energy hitting the board for Zachary here. Has the double custom catcher, chooses to bring up the Naganadel. And with that Weavile in play, he'll be able to take the knockout with Hoopa's second attack for 160. Looks like a Naganadel of his own there, moving the energy up front to that Hoopa and the knockout. All right, and this is what he wants because now he is threatening a Greedy Crush next turn if nothing happens to these energies. Definitely huge. We, we talked about the inconsistency this, this uh, Dark Toolbox deck can have, but it's actually just running rampant here. We're going to see double Custom Catcher, but kind of a de almost desperation Custom Catcher from Shintaro. But, of course, what we always say about the Blacephalon decks, right, we always count them out and then they always... Uh, they always strike back, and maybe the six cards can change things. Yeah, definitely needing to draw into the Naganadal GX here. Uh, having the four energy on that Poipol already set up for a snipe. But does he have... He has a Cherish Ball. All right, that's step one. He'll be able to draw some cards with Ultra Conversion as well. And with the Basuflon in hand, he could be looking pretty good for the next couple of turns. All right, Centaur may have actually turned things around again like these Blazephalon decks are known to do. Yeah, the one scary thing, though, is if he goes for that Weavile GX, his opponent will either just drop another Weavile GX and have the energy for the Greedy Crush or just see what he's going to be able to do. Yep, there's the Naganadel. He's going to do some charging up here. So it's definitely interesting. I, I, I would have to think you're definitely going to go for that Weavile. You want to at least shut off the, the guaranteed way he can take, take a knockout here. Well, it's weird, right? Because you've, if, if you're not going for the Weavile, then why did you put the damage on it last turn? Yeah. Right? That, that's what you were setting up for. If the Weavile wasn't on the board, sure, maybe you, you, know, you put the damage on the Sneasel earlier in the game, but you just made that action. So it just seems like that would really force your hand towards doing Weavile. And that's what he decides on. Yeah, because he did have the option to choose the Naganadel, but you, you, you got to go for the Weavile. Does turn on B-String, yep. though. Yep, as always, B-String turns have been a huge part of this tournament so far, and that's not going to end anytime soon. Two energy from the deck right onto that Ultra Beast Naganadel. 
And this is the biggest difference about Zachary's that compared to a lot of the other dark toolbox lists I've seen, they've opted for more of a scoop up route, uh, kind of like conserve your Pokemon that way. So you kind of bring up a beefy tag team, tank a hit, and then scoop it up after moving all the energies to it. That strategy is a lot worse against the Blucephalon. But with uh, this matchup with B-Strings in it, you're like, okay, you can take a knockout. It's fine. Right. I I'm going to two B-Strings next turn and then have like 10 energy in play. What are you going to do? Right. I exactly. Exactly. Playing into that B-String turn is nothing that these either of these players really want to do. But unfortunately, sometimes you're forced to do it. And Oh, man. Here is another B-String from Zachary here. But I don't know if he has that Weavile GX. Does have a recess stamp. Oh, he does have a Cherish Ball. Zachary just considering exactly what to do here. You said that that taking out that Weavile GX could be punished by Zachary just setting up another one, but he had to do what he had to do. There's an Ultra Space. Ultra Space nets a Poiple here. Most likely will go down on the bench. They're going to be beneficial. Ultra Space is for both players, of course. Um, both decks Ultra Beast based. And yeah, with that B string and the Cherish Ball, it's looking really good here. But oh wait, no. Does he play the three Weavile though? Oh right, we do we do know he had one prize. Yeah, it's take prize. The Dene. This plays insane. Big brain play from Shintaro. <laughs> Just I know you got one prize. I'm gonna take this one out, and you're not gonna have Weavile from now on. That's what we had called a soul reads, ladies and gentlemen. He just knew it was there. No more Weavile. I don't remember where exactly in the prize structure the uh, Weavile was either. Yeah, uh, and of course with that Mew down there too, uh, Hoopa's GX attack, which could have been pretty good here, doesn't really do much. And he might just have to settle for either a Rogue Ring or 160. And that's not what you want to see. Shintaro definitely senses some weakness here from Zachary. Yeah, absolutely. Once your opponent, it's one thing if your opponent can't draw and out to the Weavile, that's what you're kind of hoping for. But when your opponent doesn't, uh, when he Cherish Balls and doesn't take the Weavile, you know something's up. All right, and it looks like he did go for 160 damage and action is back on Shintaro. He escaped that turn beautifully. Sure did. All right, B-String was a draw for the turn from Shintaro. Not quite a set up yet. So we're just going to see a Cherish Ball here. Oh. Heat Ran GX. Yep. Heat Ran GX is one of the cards we didn't really see up until the ability version of Reshiram Charizard just being able to be a two prize attacker instead of a three prize one and still take some knockouts against some of the, the lower the ground Pokemon. Yeah, not a Pokemon we always see in this sort of deck, um, but uh, definitely a big beefy fire type attacker there. We've seen some other players with the card and like you said the Reshi the Reshi Zard decks. Not quite the Star of Worlds, but it has its place. Ultra Conversion discards another Naganadel GX and three cards for Shintaro. Looking for some fire energies. Had a bunch of welder in his hand. It looks like he got one. Not the best, but it does work. And yes he does. Ooh so you can attach it to the active but if you get an energy uh, or, like, either way, if you don't get an energy, this welder turns out bad. But there we go. Two energy off the top. He does draw into the energy after the welder. So he will have a drop for this turn. We'll go ahead and charge up. And so if he opts to retreat the active, he'll be able to take the knockout with Blacephal on here. And then put himself to two prizes and just that much shorter to taking the game here. Option he draw. also could go for Heat Ran GX, retreat to that, and move four fire energy to it so he can hot burn GX and take the knockout that way. He pulls the GX marker closer to him, saying, all right, all right. And with the, with the hot burn GX, it definitely keeps the energy in play and right. that's one thing that could come up big too with at least with mind blown this turn you remove four energy from play you won't be seeing those for the rest of the game right it looks like he is deciding to just retreat now into that blocephalon gx one energy in the discard pile for the retreat cost 
and just facing out which energy he needs to discard here. Trying to run through the motions. And looking like off the Mew, two off the Naganadel, and then one off the active Blacephalon for 200 damage for knockout. No, it looks like he's going five energy there, 250. The big knockout there, two prizes uh, for Shintaro. And now he is that much closer to taking the game here. Leaving that Zachary. Cephalon GX in the active position. Here comes the Nagana Dell, and Zachary has to act. Again, no access to Weavile. He does have access to a reset stamp, putting Shintaro to four cards. Man, what is it with having Zachary on camera and having his uh, Sneasels or Weavile's prized, huh? Yeah, just the, the, the curse of the stream, I guess. Just had a pretty good, op pretty good start. You know, we were talking about how maybe he had gotten over the consistency issues. Maybe it's the decks working out, and then just that we've out in the prize cards, and that Sneasel just sitting there doing nothing is so brutal. Well, honestly, if he had that we've out in the deck, this would be a very different game. Zachary would be honestly taking the win this turn. Yeah, absolutely. Just shows you how important price uh, price cards are at this level of competition. You know, just if he had access to that Weavile, the game would be over. Zachary would be, you know, moving on. But unfortunately, the prizes are coming back to haunt him here. If only he played a Nanu. <laughs> <laughs> All right, There's Lily, Lily four, for four. four. Again, it's just nothing. There's nothing in Zachary's deck that can really pull him ahead here uh, it is just kind of inevitable well deck is just so reliant on that Weavile and Zachary's just you know making all these actions but I'm just not sure where any of this gets him yeah and uh, the prize counter is wrong it is two prizes for Shintaro not four so he is closer there we go <laughs> very very close speak and it shall become right, here we go that well, Cephalon is taking a bit of damage here. Shintaro with three cards left in his hand. He did draw a Welder as well as a uh, Custom Catcher. Yeah, and this Ultra Space here. Oh, one Ultra Beast left in the deck. He'll be able to Ultra Conversion it away to draw three cards. Needs Custom Catcher and, oh man, I think two energy. Like, the Welder. So he has a Welder. He needs some energy in his hand. And then a second Custom Catcher. But it's awkward if you discard this. Oh, he has a Poiple. Oh, That's good. Poiple. That's even better. Yeah. So three fresh cards. Goodbye, Poiple. We don't need you. Energy. Heat Factory. Heat Factory. Okay. All right. We're working here. I did not see the other card. Oh, man. One Welder, though. So he can Welder the one fire and then draw into another fire for game thanks to charging up. Oh, and the Custom Catcher, of course. Yeah, he needs the catcher to actually win the game. Does it, not look does like not, it's there. Did not hit it. And he attaches. Charges up. Heat factory. And he will be able to take the knockout here and have an energy on his benched one to try to recuperate. So there's one prize remaining to Zachary's five. He has an energy on the bench Blacephalon. If this Blacephalon in the active position gets knocked out, it won't really advance the game state anyway. Shintaro Ito is very close to taking down game one here versus Zachary Kreckler. Yeah, he literally wants Zachary to take the knockout on the active so he can just burst GX for the win. Right, exactly. And this is just such a sad turn of events to watch this Dark Toolbox deck you know, get set up reasonably well and just have one thing go wrong, basically, that's going to cost yeah. them the entire game. Yeah, and that's how fragile it is, too. It is a very powerful deck, but you have so many moving pieces that if one of those gets disrupted, you're just out of luck. Here's a Lily for three, but again, I just don't think he's drawing to very much. Well, he has that custom catcher. Not too much to deal with here. I think he's one energy away from taking the knockout on the Blacephalon on the bench if he even had the double custom catcher. Looks like he only has a single catcher. Yeah, and the awkward part is he drew into the one two. He was, I think he was looking to detonate change uh, this turn. But, ooh, all right. There is the GX attack bringing back Weavile from the discard. So if Shintaro does not have and a there's fire, the energy, but, there's his own GX stack, flips the GX marker, and that is the game. 
What a rough beat for Zachary here, but Shintaro looking to take advantage of it and pulling ahead one game to zero in round six. That always feels so bad, too, when it's like, okay, I, I know I'm probably going to lose, but I just have to think about what to do here. I have to think about, like, you know, Zachary takes takes his turn and sets himself up to say, okay, if I have, you know, the 10% chance I'm going to win, I'm going to take it. Yeah. And then your opponent just, you know, slams the energy, slams the GX marker, and that's the whole game. Yeah, you got to play to your outs. And his out there was... Let's hope my opponent has nothing in their hand. All Pokemon, and right. none of them are Ultra Beasts. Yep. <laughs> and, you, you know, we're laughing about that, but that's really what you have to do at this level of competition. You know, there are matches that are won and lost just based on, okay, I think it's a 1% chance that I win, but I'm going to give myself that 1% chance, and, you know, and most you of the time know, it doesn't work out. You know, from that look, Zachary knew he had that game. It's just that second Weavile GX being in the prizes. And honestly, Shintaro starting the Mew was perfect for him. Right. Uh, him building towards that uh, Naganadel GX 170 damage snipe, just placing three damage trials on the Sneasel, forcing him to evolve the Ditto, meaning he didn't get a Naganadel in play. And then he just, all right, well, I don't have anything yet again. I'm going to welder to this guy. I'll Psy Power there. Next turn, I'll still have it. Right. And that's the, the thing when you have this deck that requires so much setup like you do uh, with a Dark Toolbox deck from Zachary, is that the decks that are a little bit more consistent can kind of afford to take it a little bit slower in some cases and just be like, you know, I'm going to do my thing. You need, you're need, you the one that needs to act, Zach. Like, you need to start setting up these Sneasels. I'm going to do what I can to disrupt that, of course. But, you know, I'm just naturally advantaged here. Blacephalon, Blacephalon's a lot easier to set up than all the things you have going on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it, it definitely wasn't that great. For Zachary after right, that. Do we have a sneeze? Do we have a Weavile prized? We do not. Okay. There is one Sneasel, but that's not too bad here. I think we might be able to see Zachary fully uh, take his deck to hopefully a win. You know, Zachary always has to operate with that one piece of the Weavile line, but at least this time it's not the actual Weavile. There's a Sneasel in the active position, and we are off on game two here. Zachary looking to win the next two games, take down this match. And Tara just saying, all I need is one. Just let me win here, advance to five and one. All right, going first does have that Pokemon communication. Started that Sneasel, and communication will probably just find the Ditto Prism here. Zachary gonna take a bit to look through his deck. Make sure he knows what's prized. Of course, those prizes hurt him pretty badly. Last time, he's probably checking through that, saying, all right, are, are my Weevils, Weevils in here? Great, great, great. All right, gets that Dark Rock Prism instead, but because, you know, he has three Dark Energies in his hand. <laughs> and another Pokemon Communication, so he'll be able to really play his entire hand down here. Communication, get that Denon GX. Dark Rock Prism Star, when you play it from your hand, you get to attach two basic Dark Energy from your hand to itself. Uh, one of the best ways to accelerate energy in this Dark Toolbox deck, and he will be able to do that, attach to the active, and draw six brand new cards, and still have a supporter for the turn. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be an amazing turn. Well, hopefully he's going to have a supporter for the turn off this day change. Yeah, Those it's always big cards are going to matter a lot. There we go. Attach for turn. No discard off the day change there. There's a Cynthia. There's some communications. All right, we got stuff to work with. All right, uh, it's a little awkward. You would want another Pokemon for that Pokemon communication. Uh, switches to the Denonate because no, you did not don't. Draw one. Yeah, you don't want the Sneasel to be in danger, especially when Shintaro can just go Welder, attach to Fire Energy, take a knockout. Yeah, if there's one thing we've learned through watching this Dark Toolbox deck, we'll say it again: the Sneasels are important. Maintaining the Sneasels on the board that can evolve into Weavals are very, very important. All right, again, this is a big six cards here for Zachary. These early turns matter so much. Gets the ditto. All right. All right. We're working with something here. So, again, this kind of seems like the start he had before, but no Mew from Shintaro kind of makes it a little safer, uh, especially since he kind of expects that 170 snipe play now. Yeah, I'm not sure how much Sh what Shintaro has really going on in his hand. Going to use Ultra Space again, one of those cards that can benefit both players when you're both playing uh, Ultra Beast based decks. I want to learn how to fan out my deck like this. I saw uh, in one uh, hand. I saw like, Hunter Butler doing that at the North American Internationals too. Maybe not in one hand though. But that no, was that's what I'm saying. Like it's too. impressive. Yeah. <laughs> we can practice tonight. Yeah. All right, Ultra Space. 
Still deciding on what to take now that he's determined what key Pokemon are prized. So it's looking like Poipole will be the selection here. And you said his hand wasn't doing too hot? I, I just saw a lot of energy. I couldn't quite make out everything that was in it, but I guess we'll see soon enough once this Ultra Space has resolved. Poipole hits the bench. <laughs> it looked to me like a bunch of energy and reset stamp. Oh no, custom catcher. Custom catcher, yeah. Maybe Heatran, and we're going to see the GX flip it over. Nope. nope. Uh, again, 50% chance to hit a fire in his prizes, but does not. Flip and nails on that one. It is now Zachary's turn yet again. We'll look to advance his board state further. Does Did get three energy in play turn one. Pretty good. Yeah. You didn't get any poibles on the board, but, you know, the, the, the energy acceleration does kind of uh, make up for that little lack there. You're still accelerating a bunch of energy. Going to be looking for a Weavile on the board and trying, trying to set up some of his main attackers here. First things first, though, Ultra Space finds that Poipole. Does have a Cynthia for the turn as well as a Pokegear. Uh, so it could decide, well, if I get like a, something like a Hot Poo off the Pokegear, it might be what I want. Or even Lily. Oh, looks like Lily's the option. Yep. So a lot of the times you might be thinking, if I have Lily and Cynthia in my hand, which one do I play? Well, it depends. So if you're looking for something really specific this turn and you need to see a lot of cards, Cynthia might be it. But if you're like, I just need maybe one card this turn, I can draw four cards off Lily, then I'm just going to play the Lily and then save the Cynthia for next turn to guarantee that I'll even have a supporter for next turn. Yeah, there is a huge advantage in playing something like the Lily that you can keep a Cynthia in your hand. Because the Cynthia, I mean, we've, we've seen people even early as turn one, Cynthia draw, you know, five energy reset stamp and just lose the game based on that. Yeah. I don't think Zachary was able to get his hand down far enough to actually make Lily worth it, though. It did not uh, look so, like that, yeah. Yeah, he had a bunch of cards in hand, so he's just going to fire off the Cynthia here. Hope these six cards are better for him. Yeah, because even... Uh, if he did, does get the Weavile, he doesn't really have a good attack this turn. Uh, if he had something like uh, Umbreon Darkrai GX, then maybe that would work. So needing a little bit more cards, Cynthia is definitely the better option. Some diligent shuffling here from Shintaro. Six fresh cards for Zachary. Are we going to see some Weaviles? It... Does not look like it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does have the one Weavile. Uh, all he really needs at this point. So now, again, he, he his deck is functioning. Yeah, it, it's super unfortunate here, though, because he did not get a way to switch that Denon GX out of the active spot for free. He had enough for five energy and played a Greedy Crush this turn. But instead, he's going to have to settle with Dark Eye Prism and put him asleep. Exactly what he's going to do, risking all four of those energy, too. Let's see what... And for this Dark Eye Prism, I believe it's called Abyssal Sleep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Great job. Uh, your opponent has to flip two coins in between turns to wake up, and if either of them are tails, it is still asleep. Essentially, Dark Void from the VGC coming into battle for this Dark Eye. Okay, he's going to have to hit two heads here. Can he do it? I think oh, that was one tails. Tail. So it doesn't even matter. It is staying asleep. And the one thing about uh, Shintaro, this deck isn't really qualified to deal with special conditions. Uh, he's the one usually putting their opponent uh, confused and burned. Is, is there actually any way for him to there is get not, rid of it? No. Yeah, so he, he's just stuck. And stuck yeah, this turn. Uh, that was an insane uh, <laughs> tails flip for him. Yeah, so it's nice. Zachary had to risk a bunch of energy on this Dark Ride Prism, but of course he knows it's protected. I'm not going to lose them anytime soon. So Shintaro will really have to take this turn off and kind of set up his knockouts for later. Maybe even something like a custom catcher bringing up that Weavile GX. Might be what he has to do. He does have that welder in hand. And this is the one part about losing Guzma that people still hurt. It's like, oh man, Guzma was so good to get out of the active spot if your guy was asleep, paralyzed. Right, exactly. Guzma was not just another gust of wind effect. Guzma was a way to also switch your Pokemon. And like we talked about a lot yesterday, there were decks just built around Guzma and built around the interactions of the, the fact that you got to switch. It definitely was not a downside. Ooh, he does have the psychic energy, but I don't know if he wants to show that yet. But 
There we go, attaching it, setting it up for next turn. He will be able to snipe and take a pretty big knockout on something like Denonay GX to keep up with the prize race, but there we go. Heads needs one more. Tails still asleep. asleep. And that's how powerful this Darkheart Prism is. It's kind of unassuming. Uh, when it first came out, it was terrible. Like, no one really played it. Dark right. didn't have that much support. And even in, like, older format, like Expanded, Dark really didn't have enough support for this to be good. But with Weavile GX, it's really coming to its own. It adds two energy to the board, and it has a really good attack for a, a non-two-prize attacker. Well, I remember I've seen a lot of players in the past couple of weeks uh, being like, hey, does anyone have any Dark Ride Prisms? You know, I sold all mine last <laughs> year. Uh, kind of awkward. You know, it's <laughs> spiked in price, been a huge part of what makes this Dark Toolbox deck work, and it's, it's doing work here. All right, Shintaro also has the option to just take the knockout with Venom Shot on the active Pokemon, too, getting rid of four energy on the board. And it's probably what he's going to have to do. Not before Cynthia, though, going to refresh his hand to six cards. It, looks, it seems like uh, Shintaro is a lot more focused on using this Nagano Dell when he can, the, the GX specifically, than I've seen a lot of other players in the past. Um, which is pretty interesting. I mean, the, once, the, the, the snipe for 170 is a really powerful thing you can be doing. Yeah, well, usually you see, like, one copy in these lists, just so you can alter conversion your extra Naganadels away, your extra Blacephalon, your extra Poiples. Right. Uh, it really helps against the reset stamp, and that is what the main use is in Shintaro's deck. But the fact that he went as far as add the Psychic Energy, he's like, yeah, you guys, 170 damage to any Pokemon is really good. And being able to charge it up in two turns with Welder or B-String, yeah, 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 I like that. Look, look guys, I, I know we're dealing with a lot of big tag teams here, but speaking of B-String, there is a big B-String. Look, guys, I know we're dealing with tag teams here, but 170 Snipe is still still very good, and he's proving that as that B-String attaches two on the Lucephalon. So now he's in a position where that Naganadel GX is going to do a big Snipe right here, and he has the backup attacker already set up. So this one is much more of a back-and-forth battle. And the thing he's going to have to worry about is, depending on what he chooses to go for, that uh, Mega Sableye Tyranitar GX looks pretty scary on the bench. Yeah, that's something he'll have to hope to clean up with that Blacephalon GX. So if you're Shantaro here, do, do you fear the sleep, just basically skipping your turn uh, so much that you want to just take out the Darkrai Prism? Or do you think you want to take more prizes, have a little more impact on the game, and knock out the uh, Dedenne? Yeah, so it's hard. Uh, with him not having any out against this sleep, you really either put the game on a coin flip or you choose to take that out. You also do get to take out the energy too, but you go down to four prizes. Zachary gets to use his B-strings. He'll still get energy in play. Take a knockout most likely with that Mega Sableye. Take you out of B-string range. And then you're just left with the two energy in play. Hitting the reset stamp here is pretty good, though. Yeah, it might be more reasonable for him to just let let the Dark Rye exist, knock out the, uh, the Dene, go down to three prizes, and hope to knock out a big tag team later. Yeah, and that's really what he's setting up to do, especially with that Heat Run. Uh, or sorry, he already used the GX stack, so Heat Run's pretty much useless right now. <laughs> Looks like we're going to do some charging up, though. Getting energy ready on the board for the next turn, perhaps. Cherish ball. What do, what do you think you deck? would do in a situation? Do you take out the Prism Star or do you go for the two prizes? Uh, the reset stamp changes a little bit. All right. right. Um, he will still have five cards in hand after he draws for his turn. But you really want to play to win. Uh, if you're going to 170, knock out the Dark Eye, and he doesn't have the, the Whoa, B strings. Whoa, we've, got, a, we've got an accident in the feature match area. New everyone. sleeves, new sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you. Go and take the knockout on Denonay. He has the knockout for sure. And then you're just, like, that's basically his play he's going to do. Like, you can read it. You can right, telegraph right. it. Right, You know exactly what's going to happen. But then it's up to you. Like, okay, does he have his own reset stamp? Do I have enough to welder into play because B-strings don't work anymore? Right. Um, do I have enough energy on board to even take a knockout on that Mega Sableye Tyranitar? So it's a lot of things that he has to think about. Uh, the Heat Factory is pretty good here. Getting rid of Ultra Space, he could now go for uh, something like uh, Naganadel, but if you do that, you still leave the energy on the board, too. There's a Custom Catcher 
is drawing up to three cards. All right, B string. Ooh, okay, so hitting the second wow. B string here, I think he definitely goes for that Denonay GX. Uh, you are just you so, so much many closer. On the board. Yeah, you're so much closer to taking the knockout that you don't care if he takes three prizes off this active because you're going to get the knockout next turn. Right, and you also see uh, the power of Blacephalon there. He can, uh, Shintaro can afford to B string around the around on different Pokemon because the Blacephalon itself doesn't need a bunch of energy attached to itself. It just needs energies on the board. Oh, they're trying to see uh, if he used Ultra Conversion yet. Uh, I, do, I honestly do not remember. I don't think he has, though. Uh, he's trying to argue that the, those cards were discarded from Denonay GX. Uh, I, I, I'm honestly not sure. Do you, do you recall enough to make a definitive decision? He's, he's been doing a lot this turn. Um, I believe he did. Okay. Because uh, he got the extra Naganadel, but... He also, like, because he got it and the Denonay at the same time, but I don't think he would have Ultra Conversion when he was planning on Denonay. So you're saying he hasn't then? Yeah, I, I don't think he has right. uh, if I'm, like, playing through the turn as him. Right. Because you want to maximize your chance of hitting the most stuff, so you don't want to draw three cards just to possibly discard them if they're, like, Welder or even Fire Energies. Yeah, the... Uh, so they're trying to walk judges through this are, turn. They're figuring it out. I mean, they'll... Mm. They're saying earlier in the turn he discarded. Well, so the thing is, figure this out. yeah. Uh, the thing is, I think there's only two Ultra Beasts in his discard. The Blacephalon was knocked out, and then if he's saying the Poipol was discarded from the Dede change, then uh, he should be able to Ultra Conversion. Right. It's just a matter of. I mean, they're just replaying the turn out. Judges will figure it out. Judges, you know, that's what, that's what they're there for, is to make sure the game state is, you know, staying legal. Um, they're paying close attention to the game. It just does matter a lot, right? I mean, three, yes. ex three extra cards is so huge, especially when you're trying to thin your deck out for reset stamp when the game is, you know, a few minutes away from ending. Uh, this is the type of decision that you really have to make sure you're spending a lot of time on and make sure that you get right. Yeah, and it's been crazy, too, because he's been doing so much this turn. Uh, there has been two B strings. There's been uh, the Denene and everything under the sun. Yeah, there's just been so much here. I mean, the, these decks just go through so many actions. They discard a bunch of cards, draw a bunch of cards, you know, B string a bunch. Judges will get this resolved, of course. Yeah, and hopefully they get a good time extension, too, since this is taking up a little bit of time. Yeah. But if he's telling me otherwise, I have to err on the side of him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear that there, but he's saying, yeah, I don't really know for sure, but if he's telling me otherwise, I have to err with him. So. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's hard. You know, you, you'd think that, you know, as the opponent, you would be keeping track of all that stuff, but so many actions happen in a turn. I mean, we're, we're watching the game intently and talking about the actions, yeah. and we don't still even quite remember. You know, and he's, Zachary's thinking on. about what he's trying to do next yeah, turn. He's yeah, like, okay, well, exactly. he's going to knock out either my Darkrai or my Denene, and then I have to figure out a plan to actually win this game, especially since he has already five extra energy in play from when he first started this turn. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I gotta say, I don't, I don't really think he has, but I wouldn't feel comfortable. I mean, obviously, I'm not a judge; I don't have that power. But even if I was, I wouldn't quite feel comfortable making that ruling straight away. And it's yeah. so hard to just revert. You know, there's some turns where you can just kind of go through and reverse the game state and just be like, well, remember this happened and then this happened. But with with all of this stuff, with B strings and shuffling and searching, it just. All right. Uh, right it looks uh, like it's been resolved. They're getting a four-minute time extension. Yep. And. He can activate. Okay. Okay, yeah, and it looks good. It's saying he's been uh, tapping those kind of inconsistently, 
but they finally figured out he's able to go through his turn, and he's actually played out his discard in a way that you can kind of see. Right, you can kind of tell the story of the turn. One of the things I don't like about, I mean, tapping the Pokemon to kind of indicate, you know, turning them sideways to indicate that you've used their abilities is smart, but I kind of don't, I feel like some people forget to do it, to fix it when they end their turn, and so then you start your turn and you just have all these Pokemon sideways. Just, <laughs> uh, so, yep. obviously memory is difficult. Uh, it's definitely, you got to be able to keep track of everything you're doing, especially when you have so many things to do uh, in Shintaro's deck. So right, here, now we're back in the game, four minute time extension, and it looks like we're still debating on what he wants. And now you can kind of see him going through it himself to the body language, saying, do I want to take out the, the Dene? What can I take out here? Yeah, so you can take out the Naganadel, kind of shut off B-String for your opponent, take out the Dark Eye Prism, get rid of four energy, but B-String turns on. Uh, or you take out the Dene and kind of set up for a big game next turn. And, and he opted for that Dark Eye Prism. Only one energy in play now. Uh, do we see a ton of Beast Rings? Well, there is a ton of supporters in Zachary's hand. Yeah, so taking, I guess, maybe the more conservative approach, just trying... I don't even know what, what you would really call that play, but eliminating the energy on the board at the expense of prizes is what Shintaro chose to do. Yeah. Uh, definitely playing more to the board position than to his own uh, win. Absolutely. Looks like we are communicating for a Dedene GX. We're going to see a Dedene change of Zachary's own. Yeah, and that's going to be pretty good here. Uh, he does have a Pokegear, Hapu, and a Lily in his hand. So it depends what he really wants to do. He's looking for those B-strings, but you also don't want to discard a lot of cards with that Hapu. You could just be discarding a lot of energy that you would be searching for. And Lily or Cynthia, the last two cards off of this Poke Gear, has a Lily in hand already. So opting for the Lily here just because that's one of the worst cards to draw after a Dede change. So he's got a Dede change, get rid of this hand most likely, and see six cards, and then he knows at least Cynthia's in there. Uh, opting for the Hapu though, and I do like this play a lot too. You're searching for just B strings. Found one. He does hit one. And there's no darks to actually discard with that, so that's actually pretty good, too. Beast Ring, and looks like Dark City is the other choice for Zachary here for your treat for his basic dark Pokemon now. Yeah, Heat Factory is gone. Dark City is in play. Now we're going to see if Beast Ring did manage to find one so far in the turn. Yeah, and now needs to Dede change and find one more Dark Energy to actually take the knockout here. And this is one of the things. This is one of the things that the uh, that the knocking out the Dark Eye Prism Star really punishes them, uh, punishes Shintaro, where it's like, well, yeah, you've made a lot of my energy, but you turn on my Beast Rings. And it looks like he did not find another one. Really? He has an energy. Oh, well, he needs one. Yeah, he just has the energy. He does not have the Beast Ring. Uh, the energy he means has, he's oh, he has able not to crush. Yeah. Yet. Cherish Ball coming down for Zachary here. Really just playing it to not draw into it again. Especially since he's most likely going to go down to three cards here. Ops for the Umbreon Darkrai GX. Uh, we'll most likely see that to the bench. He could attack with it right now. Um, but with five energy only instead of the six, it's GX Tech isn't really what you want to see here. There's the energy coming down. And I think we'll be seeing a big greedy crush here. So the other option is you, you save it, you attack with the Umbreon Darkrai, and you get a save two energy for when he knocks you out, but you don't take the knockout back. Still on B-String turn, just gives him so much more power. Yeah, absolutely. So Zach's gonna be careful here, take some time, consider all of his options. Make sure that whatever decision he makes, we are approaching the end of the game. We don't want uh, any mistakes to be made. All right, looks, looks like... like they're having another judge call, perhaps? Yeah. 
This is definitely intense and coming down to the wire. These players are one win for essentially you can tie and maybe make it in on the bubble, but one win here is really just putting yourself in a huge advantage to make top eight. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the numbers should out like, but it would be like 5 one one is should be safe, right? In a, in a dangerous world, there's a there's a spot where five one one like a couple five one ones will miss, and I think and that happened last year. Tiebreakers, yeah. Like it, it's so brutal when you see someone that's X one and one miss because it's like, man, how, how was I supposed to really <laughs> do better? You know what? That's so good. Um, I'm sure that they have figured out exactly. Uh, you know, they're going to do the math. They're going to run the numbers and see what happens. But uh, either way, a uh, win here is absolutely huge. You want obviously want to win all your rounds. And this is really could You know, if we're right about 5-1-1 being, like, in probably, uh, a loss will eliminate either player. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's going to be tough, too, because Shintaro took that first game uh, pretty, like, so it was pretty close on prizes, but it was pretty convincing on the board. Right, right. Uh, and then uh, Zachary, of course, he is looking pretty good this game, although Shintaro had that really amazing turn last turn. So I, I don't know if he's going to even be able to pull this game out. But if he does, they're not really going to have a lot of time for game three. Yeah, exactly. Luckily, you know, during all these judge calls, the clock will be kind of stopped, basically. They yeah. will get that time back. But uh, it's going to be close, and neither player really wants, wants a draw here. Uh, not sure what the judge call is about, of course, but this is a very, very tense moment. We're at the pinnacle of the game. We're at the you know highest level of competition. Chintaro and Zachary have both been here before. They're both you know great competitors. Chintaro has actually been all the way to finals and actually won worlds before. Um, but this is you know a high stress, high leverage moment. And we'll have to see how this turns out after this judge call. Yeah, and both of these decks are decks I actually want to see in top eight too. Uh, playing two Heat Ran GX is something that you haven't really seen in Blacephalon, uh, and it's taken Shintaro very far. And then, of course, uh, Zachary with the one of the lone dark boxes doing well here. Uh, and unfortunately for on camera, he just had a few bad luck with those prizes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, the, the matches that weren't on camera have gone a lot better than the matches that were on camera. Um, of course, because, you know, he's still won a lot of matches. And I agree with you. I, I think the Dark Box decks, you know, personally, as a player, I wouldn't want to be playing because I think it is just inconsistent. Yeah. But it's really fun to watch. And it's, you know, really explosive and has some cool starts. And then the Blacephalon deck is something that I got to be honest, I, I think myself and maybe some others really kind of underrated. You know, it, it was always a deck that people knew about. It was always something we were going to play. But I was all on, you know, uh, Picaram and, you know, Reshizard and even Malamar. Like, these are going to be the big popular decks. And then Blacephalon has just come through and impressed me so much every time it's been on camera. Yeah, uh, I think we've casted it three times now ourselves, and just every time it's like, I don't think they're going to get there. And then all of a sudden, they have nine energy in play, and you're like, what happened? What, yeah. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> exactly. And especially the version that Shintaro is running. I mean, basically, there's two kind of versions. I think the most popular by a large margin is the version Shintaro is running with that Naganadel, you know, charging up, kind of putting more energy on the board. It's, it's an ultra beast. It's kind of a natural fit. Uh, there's also the version that we saw Zach Lesage running that's kind of skewing that and just being, you know, I'm going to straight up Lecephalon. This is what I'm trying to do. And then even Shintaro himself has taken uh, even a little bit of a different route. He's playing those Heatran. He does have that psyche energy for the Nagano Del GX. So even within kind of that archetype, he has a little bit of spice of his own. Yeah, I, mean, I love the psychic energy. You're able to B-string it out. You, that just means it's 170 snipes anywhere you want, pretty much any time you want. And I bet a lot of the people haven't even seen it coming. Uh, you can just, all right, I'll take these knockouts. Oh, you have a detonate there. I have two prizes left because I knocked out a tag team and burst GX. Oh, that's game. Right, exactly. It just makes so much sense. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what percentage of the players playing this deck have included it, but it's something that you don't see very often. Uh, maybe some innovation of Shintaro's own. Just, and it shows why he's a world champion, right? And yeah. if you want to speak about innovation, when he won the world championship in 2016, he was playing the uh, Mega Adino, a, a card that I know a, I know a lot of people who personally hadn't even read that card before. Oh, much, less, <laughs> <laughs> much less thought it was a contender. Much less thought it would win the world championship. Yeah. I, I remember we featured it on camera in the early rounds. Obviously, later he was on camera and did a lot of work. But in the early rounds, and it was kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's. Really good Shintaro. against, like, Night March. Right. And it's like, oh, we're, we're playing this, like, you know, cool deck. It's different. We want to show, you know, honestly, a lot of it is like, oh, we have this interesting deck. Maybe we should show them in the early rounds. We don't know how well they're going to do. We don't know how consistent they can be. But he proved it was consistent. Uh, it was a great metagame call. It got there and, it, you know, won him a world title. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's pretty insane to think about. And Zachary's been up uh, at these kind of levels for sure. 
And I don't know, I don't really know who's going to pull it out, but the way it's seeming right now, and especially with these long judge calls, I think Shintaro might be able to take it. Yeah, uh, again, not sure what this is going to, you know, amount to, but we will keep you updated on that. I also believe Shintaro is in a favorable position here. I just think these, you know, we saw, we saw, um, Shintaro eliminate energy off the board of Zachary, and then we saw Zachary, you know, have to, he had to use some B-strings, and he had to charge up, and he had, he had to draw the energy off of the supporter he played, and he, you know, he kind of, he set his hand up in a way where he kind of mitigated that, he reset the energy, basically, but Shintaro just does that so much easier, even though they're playing with a lot yeah. of the same cards, and each energy is so much more impactful, right? Every time Shintaro is going to have a turn where he attaches five energy and has a total of seven in play, he's going to take a knockout on basically anything, and the same just can't be said for Zachary. Yeah, uh, you can do 120, put you to sleep, which was really good there. It's just, unfortunately, uh, it didn't amount to too much. We'll have to see how it goes and what ends up causing here. We also, uh, just while, while we're taking a little bit of a break here, we have gotten word that Tord Recliffe is 5-0-1. and oh one, boy. Which means that uh, he should be able to just shake hands the next, the next round, 5-0-2, make top eight of the World Championship. Is there anything that man cannot do? Uh, well, before it was make top eight at Worlds, but it looks like that is a lost dream now. Now, of course, there is the possibility. I don't know what the pairings look like. I don't know what the tiebreakers look like. There is a possibility he gets paired down, has to play, loses, and then he's the one that is going to bubble out if there even is a 5-1-1. But that requires all of those things to happen. That requires a 5-1-1 missing. Also requires towards 5-0-1 resistance not being better than a lot of other players out there yeah. who could be playing the 5-0-1. So, you know, I, yeah, I, there's no guarantees, there's no promises in life, but I have to say it looks like Torrid has locked up a top eight of the World Championship. Yeah, and it's funny, uh, the only time he was on stream, he actually took his one tie. <laughs> right, yeah, we, we got to see that in action. And Torrid, wow, I mean, there, so the story of Torrid, so I'm sure all of you know, you know, he's a multiple-time international champion. No one, going back all the way to uh, Jason Klasinski back in you know, 2006, 2008, 2013, no one besides Jason has won back-to-back uh, -back big events like that yeah. over the years. And Tor did it all in one season. And Tor did it, you know, arguably at a time where the games competition is a little bit tougher. You know, he did it all. The, the, the information's season. out there. Right. Whereas before, uh, 10 years ago, uh, Jason, he was like, yeah, I'm going to come to the tournament. No one's going to know what I'm playing until like round eight. <laughs> right. And then it came, he came into this season and, you know, it's, it's going to be funny because I'm going to say he didn't really play much. He yeah. didn't dedicate his whole life to the game as he has in the past, but he still was one of the top 22 players in Europe just for, from, you know, you can call it some, you know, lucky placings, whatever. But I think he got like 21st, 20th. Right. But the tournaments he did play and he managed to do well enough just to clinch that spot. And that really says something. Again, you know, so many players are playing all the whole season, they're grinding out their season, they're flying to regionals, and they can't actually even qualify for Worlds. And for Torn, only playing a little bit, basically taking the season off, means, oh, I might not make day two. Oh, <laughs> sorry, never mind, I did. Yeah. Right? It was never a question <laughs> if he was going to get his invite. It was a question for a little bit if he was going to if he was going to get the day two invite. Yeah, uh, it, it's crazy to think about, uh, and I cannot wait to see if he makes it in the top eight. He's definitely going to be one of the favorites for sure with you at home as well. Uh, and hashtag play Pokemon. Get that out there if you're rooting for Tord or anyone else that is in contention here for top eight. And it looks like our game is ready to get back down. Uh, I believe another four minute time extension. And players seem to be laughing it out. It's all good. All right, no hard feelings, it looks like. Uh, it looks like play can resume now. So, where were we? Zachary Kreckler was trying to uh, stay in this game. So he attached his energy for the turn. Yeah, all energies have been done. Charge up's been done. Beast Ooh, has been used. Has that Hoopa GX, and he could opt to do the GX attack here to kind of snipe around some stuff. Either that or just go for the 160. But yeah, it looks like here. Devilish Hands GX. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon GX or EX six times. And uh, then they do 30 damage for each one that you choose. So the so GX a, counter has been flipped. 180 total damage that can come on the board. Uh, he could take the knockout on the Denon GX. Could also uh, take a knockout on a Blacephalon. But here he's looking to spread it out and set up the win for next turn with Dark or Umbreon Darkrai GX. All right, action is back on Chintaro now. 
The Umbreon Darkrai GX uh, is set up to win. Now he's going to be very clear about this ability here. Three new cards. So Shintaro needs to eliminate Ooh. eliminate the Umbreon Darkrai. Can he actually do that? Well, there's no uh, Umbreon Darkrai in play. He's just setting up the damage to win next turn. After I mean, is, is there any is there any way that he can stop yeah. this from happening? So like he maybe take double out this custom catcher, <laughs> take out the Weavile. That way, uh, Zachary's really just forced to play with the energy that he has in play, and uh, it's going to take a, a couple turns to get another Weavile out. And with his hand, I don't think he has that option. Another B string. So remember, Zachary not taking a knockout last turn. B-String is still alive. That's two more energy coming down for Shintaro. And he has a ton in play. Another snipe coming here, too, thanks to that welder. And he's actually going to take the knockout on the Weavile GX with the Ultra, or the with the, uh, the, the Ganadel GX. Yep, so that's exactly what's going to happen. Pull it to the active position. Knock it out. Oh, man, that is rough. Two prizes remaining. Where's that Nanu? <laughs> We're going to charge right. up on Zachary's side. And what can Zachary do to stay in this game here? Yeah, well, he has six energy in play, but with no way to really move them around, it does not look good here. Oh, that is just heartbreaking. He can Dark Strike, take the knockout, but then Chintaro just wins next turn. It looks like the riding is on the wall here. It was a very cute play from Zachary, but the double yeah, you, custom you, you catcher. Can see, you can see the body language from Zachary. He just, he just doesn't think he has it. There, one custom catcher needs to draw one card. It's a reset stamp. Yeah, but that does not work. Game is on board thanks to all he that energy. He the hand. Shintaro Ito may be on his way to another top eight here at the World Championship. All right. I was, saying, I was saying that Tord might have been the favorite for this top eight, but Shintaro Ito has something to 